It's that Warrior Wednesday. It's hump day. It's my brother Ed Hennens. Ed, you killed it last night, brother. You killed it. You tapped into something deep. For everybody, please, if you are not tapped into what my man Ed Hennens is doing on Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Yo, his comeback show is crazy. Yo, Ed, you tapped into something. If you refine that story right there, my brother, my brother. Like, I was sitting back like, yo, I, I got to go harder on Mondays. My man done tapped into something so deep and so powerful. But I love it. I love the inspiration you provide. And so, everybody, please, if you haven't already, follow my man Ed Hennens. Every Tuesday night, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central Time, he does his comeback thing. And, and, and it's crazy. I love the inspiration. Who else we got? Uh, My mother looked like she jumped on. Ma, what up? My mother's doing better, y'all. She back in the building. Bright and early. Everybody wave at my mother. She's doing good. Mom, happy to see you in the building. Making me proud. And I hope you learned how to jump on this yourself. But we'll give it another few minutes, y'all. And, um, you know, we'll get started with it. Brother North, what up, kid? Yo, it's crazy. If y'all haven't um, checked out my man, Brother North, is I, I was up something like 4.30 this morning listening to Brother North music. Go figure. This is what I do at 4.30 in the morning. Movers support movers. <laughs> Shout out to my man, Brother North. Got a lot of heat. Who else we got jumping in the building? Oh, man. I wish I could say it. I think that says Johnny Johnny White, Johnny something. I think that's Johnny somebody. But it is what it is. What up, Johnny? Um, Let me see. I'll give it another minute, and then we get started. It's still early. I like to start around 7.05. Give everybody a chance to get in. Uh, where we at, y'all? Let me let me address the obvious. Let me address the elephant in the room. Um, we are obviously not on Clubhouse today after all the crap I talked last week. So, I mean, I take full responsibility for it. Like, I, I, I'm, you know, I thought it was going to be easier. Just so, in case y'all don't think that I actually got my iPhone. Hold on. I actually got this thing. The only problem is, I just, this has been a crazy, and there's no excuses. Um, I just didn't go in there. I set up the account. So the account set up. Um, it's going to be power move makers for all of y'all. It's going to be power move makers. But truth be told, my man Derek Ferguson connected me with, with a clubhouse guru earlier today. And we were talking and he was like, yo, it ain't as simple as you just, um, going on Clubhouse and thinking you going, you know, uh, have an audience off the rip. So I suggest, you know, you take a week and really promote it and let people know. Um, for, yo, Curry the Kid, what up, Curry? Um, you know, he was like, I suggest you take a week and really promote this thing properly. So God willing, my man is going to jump into this conversation tonight. I invited him to a, a live because he was educating me so much. And I was just like, yo, you know what? I'm going to just fall on my sword. I just got to take the hit. Um, I look nuts out here. But it is what it is. Um, you know, next week we'll be on live. Okay, for anybody who's trying to jump in this conversation, uh, let's, let's, let's start this off. Uh, is my man Soji in the building yet? And uh, for any of you guys who do not know Soji, he is a, a definitely supporter of the move of the movers community. Soji, if you're there, hit that um request button to come on live. But I was talking to him offline today because he sent me some of his clothes. Um he's got a, a athletic apparel company. And I just think his clothes are so dope. And I really wanted to talk to him about where he's at in the process. Um, you know, he, he just he just has some really, really great stuff. And I, and I think that it would be important to have a real in-depth business conversation that our community can um, can can learn from. 
So hold on. Soji, where you at? Oh. I see, I see you sent the request to jump on. Hold tight. You next. Hey, Brother Prez. What's up, so man? Can you what you... What's that up, man? You... My head cut off here. Let me let me adjust this. What up, kid? What's up, man? You, you caught me in a workout, man. So I, I might be looking a little crusty, man. But you know, it's, it's all good. Come on, man. You 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 selling athletic wear? You li you living hey. the you living the product? Yeah, man. What walking it in the gym, man? I'll, I'll you know what they say ABC, man. I'll always be selling, you know. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Soji, real quick. Um, and here's the deal, guys. I met Soji through this community. And this is what I love so much about what we're doing here because it's movers supporting movers. It's me learning from y'all, y'all learning from me, me being exposed to different businesses, different startups, different people's journey. And um, Soji has been a, a, a supporter of what we're doing and I got introduced to his company. So, Soji, I don't want to put words in your mouth. You never had a, you, you've been on our live a million times, but can you just educate the community on who you are, a little bit about your background, and then I want to go into um, your company. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm an attorney by trade. Um, and, you know, several years ago, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, I wanted to get into the athletic apparel business because – um, you know, I grew up playing sports, wrestling, track, baseball, football, gymnastics, all that stuff. You know, we grew up idolizing the, the Michael Jordans and, the, you know, all the football players. Um, and, you know, around that time, I noticed that, you know, we there was a lot of representation on the advertising side of, of brands and Nike and Adidas and Pumas. Um but there were no producers on that side that came from our communities, the communities that, that we grew up in. And, you know, as you start getting older and you start seeing that, you, you start looking at the background of the companies that they, they don't necessarily structure their companies and, and, you know, they don't have a lot of diversity in their companies. Let's put it that way. So what I wanted to do was diversify the athletic apparel industry. And so I figured that a lot of the, great athletes come from our communities. So why not have some apparel that can represent the athletes that come, to, come from our communities? Um, so uh, about three years ago, got back into it. We have the website up now. It's uh, www.soljiwear.com. That's S-O-L-G-W-E-A-R.com. Uh, we got the Instagram up. Um, the Instagram is S O L G underscore W. Um, so right now, well, we, if you go to our website and you look at our website right now, we have a lot of women's apparel. We have a lot of women's leggings, a lot of women's sports bras. And, you know, like you we were talking earlier today that the women, they, they love, they love the leggings. You know, it's some of the most, the feedback I hear all the time is it's some of the most comfortable leggings that you will ever wear. You know, they're good for any type of workout. You know, they're, they're breathable. They, they fit good, uh, let's say, around the curves. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're flexible. Um, so we wanted something that, you know, we could design not only that comes from our community, but it's a quality product. You know, it feels good. You see right now I got one of the hoodies on. You'll see the hoodies on the website. Um, we have some men's dry fits on the website. Um, so right now, we're, you know, we're just building. You know, we're building. This is a logo. I'm not sure how good you can see it if it if it needs to be. We can there. see it. We can see it. The logo is dope. So, yeah, but so we're just we're just building. I mean, we, we want to be a full service athletic wear brand, just like the Nikes, just like the Under Armour. So you know, we want to have the shoes come out and everything. I, I don't know if you probably most of y'all saw the movie Black Panther, right? But so one of the things I caught was. Um, you know, when, when, when they came from uh, Wakanda, when they came to Oakland at the very end of the movie, uh, the young lady actress had a pair of Vans on. So I'm like, you know, they were in Wak Wakanda, you know, building their own technology. They had spaceships, they had weapons, they had the best technology. But when they come here to the States, 
Uh, and, you know, this is no knock against bands or anything like that, but, you know, it comes from the skateboard community, you know? So, um, so I, th- I think it's kind of, it's kind of ironic that they come here to the United States. This movie is all about culture, but you know, when, when you come to the United States, you, you can't find something that comes from our culture to wear as, as, as a pair of sneakers, generally speaking. I know there's some exceptions out there. I know there's some other stuff out there, but uh, like mainstream uh, athletic apparel is difficult to find that comes from, from our culture. Okay, so I got a couple of questions for you, and I'm going to ask because I want to help uh, some of our audience who might not be in the apparel business, but they are starting business. They're startups, okay? You yeah. you, you are a lawyer by trade. Um, right. I, I'm a firm believer that there are no wasted experience. I'm a firm believer in trust in the process. First and foremost, uh, what type of law did you study, and how has the law helped you in even building this business? Or has it at all? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think I think it helps. I mean, in law school, I was a general practitioner, but I mean, since I've been out, I've done a lot of contracts, uh, contracts and business uh, litigation, uh, civil rights. I did a lot of civil rights work in Pennsylvania. Um, but I, but I think the uh, I, I think the law the law helps because it helps you analyze. You know, mm-hmm. it helps you with, with patients and evaluating things. Um, you know, and, you know, law school itself is just a grind, man. So you could be up in the, in the library 10 hours, uh, you know, at a time just, just studying, you know, um, like on, you know, Saturday night, Sunday nights. So um, it, it really teaches you how to analyze. So, um, you know, one of the things we do with, 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 our, with our pair is that, you know, we put a lot of uh, detail into it. You know, we put a lot of detail in, into the quality of the materials, uh, you know, making sure the materials are right, you know. And, you know, um, you know, you're dealing with manufacturers and things like that. You're not always going to have wins. You're not always going to have hits. But, you know, um, you know, but, you know, uh, you just got to keep going. You just got to keep trusting the process, keep working sometimes. You know, they're, you know, you tell them, you know, specifically how you want something, what material you want, and they send you the wrong thing. So sometimes you just got to go back to the drawing board. Sometimes you got to have that patience. Sometimes you just got to uh, reach out to multiple manufacturers at the same time. You know, sometimes that's how I spend my days, um, just communicating with manufacturers all day. Um, and also pay attention to the feedback that you're getting. You know, uh, what outfits do uh, men and women, and particularly the women, because I think the, the women are, are more particular about their workout apparel than the men are, but what, what, what's the feedback that I'm getting? Um, what are the outfits that they like the most? Um, and the things, how, how does the material last? How does it wash? Um, you know, so all those things you got to be paying attention to. And I also pay attention to, what the, what the big guys in the industry are doing. What are some of the things that they're doing? What are some of the things that they're working on? And so when we, when we started, we, we knew that Nike was probably the most popular athletic wear brand out there, right? But um, so one thing that Nike does have, they, they have innovative sneakers and things like that, but they also have a logo that looks good on the sneaker, right? So we, we knew that we needed to have a logo that although if, it, if it's sometimes, uh, you know, some of the viewers seeing it for the first time right now, it, it may look weird or something to them. But the thing about it is that, you know, like, like think about like the McDonald's arches, you just got to keep seeing it over and over it again. You know, you got to put it on hot people, you got to market it. So, you know, our culture knows how to market anything better than anybody. Clubhouse, for example, I've never seen a commercial or none for Clubhouse, but I hear about it all the time through social media and stuff. So, you know, we, we, we promote those things, um, you know, so, uh, you know, so we know how to market things, you know, we put it on our culture, we swag it out and, you know, that, that's how we make stuff hot. And that's the same thing we want to do with soldier. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I got to give you credit um, on is it, the actual product is such great quality. Like I was telling you offline, I'm, I'm big into hoodie, sw- hooded sweaters, um, any types of sweaters. That's 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 my thing. When I first uh, got your hoodies, hooded sweater, I was like, oh my god, this is like nothing I never felt before. You're not a fashion guy. You don't come from that background. Is there people on your team that that is picking this stuff out from you? Like, how are you managing to get such great quality athletic wear when there are major companies out there that that 
don't have the same quality as as you have. Um, you know, you just gotta you get you gotta scour the earth, man. You gotta you gotta pay attention to detail. You gotta uh, you know always get get samples in. You know, samples of materials. Um, you know, d- 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 you know, you, you just gotta be an animal, man. You know, I'm I'm thinking about this movie. Like, I don't know if it's appropriate for this right now, but I'm thinking about this movie. It's called it's called War Dogs, right? And there's these two guys that were arms dealers. Uh, and one one of the guys was an older guy. He was bringing his young homie into the business, and uh, you know, the younger guy said to the older guy, he said, "Yeah, I talked to this guy Henry Gerard today." And he's like, "You talked to Henry Gerard today?" He's like, yeah. He's like, who is he? He's like, he's the biggest arms dealer in the world. He supplied every, uh, you know, conflict, both sides of every conflict for the past 20 years. He's like, he's a freaking animal. He said, well, why is he, why is he calling me then? He said, because he's a freak. He, he didn't say freaking, but he said he's a freaking animal. That, that's why. And I, I think you're kind of the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I DM you, you know, I, I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm not one of the, you know, big high profile people, but you still respond. You know, so, um, any anytime you know any manufacturer hits hits me up, you know I'm going to respond. I'm going to check them out. I guess I'm going to see what they got. Um, you know, it's just about doing that diligence, researching. Um, you know, I do have some 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 folks that I know that I do rely on that have been in the industry for a long time, and I, I get some pointers from them. But I mean, a lot of it, man, is just going out there seeking to destroy it, man. Going out there and getting. It. And I, I would say to anybody out here listening is that. I, it doesn't necessarily matter if you're in that particular industry. If you have that vision and you kind of have, uh, you know, you, you have something that you're really passionate about and you really want to do it. I mean, a lot of people out here who have started these big companies, they didn't have it all figured out in the beginning, you know, but they had something that they knew that they wanted to do. You and I were talking, you know, offline is something that you always say, we all quote 50, get rich or die trying. So, you know, go after it, go after it, do your diligence, do your research. And pay attention to what the other companies uh, that are already out there are doing. And also, I think sometimes we try to reinvent the wheel sometimes, you know. And sometimes there's a path that's already kind of out there, a blueprint that we can follow. So uh, in, a, in a certain aspect, I'm already, I'm just following some of those blueprints and putting a little different swag on is all I'm doing. Well, I think you're doing a great job, man. I mean, you definitely got my attention. Um, I wanted to bring you on because I think that you can help some people who are – uh, still in the infancy of their company. Before I let you go, how big is your team right now? We we, we got a, we, we got about six people on the team right now. That's great. That's great. Um, you do, do you want to do you want to speak uh, to to how you have grown your team? Because I know that you know for a lot of people who might be tuned in right now, it, it's hard to get people to believe. It's hard to get people to – to, and I don't know if these are people who are, are salaried or if these are people who are interning and just believe in you. So I don't – you know, and that's not even necessary. But can you just – for somebody out there, because I, I can tell you as a, as a business owner, you can't do this by yourself. It is impossible. You, you right. need a team, and you're only as good as your team. It's as simple as that. So – for you still being a small company, how have you attracted people? Like, like what, what have you done to bring people in? And what suggestions can you give to somebody who is in um, either the position of starting a small business or they, they're, they're somewhere in the early phases of their journey? Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, that is one of the difficult things, uh, you know, getting people on the team, getting people to um, buy into the vision, especially early when you don't have, uh, you know, a whole lot of capital, a whole lot of funds to give, you know, just get people weekly uh, paychecks. I, I, I think I remember you said something in one of the lives one time, too, is like when you're starting off in the beginning sometimes, sometimes you don't go after the most qualified people. Sometimes you go after people you kind of know, you know, so we, we that's, that, that's, that's kind of a lot of what we've been doing, you know, uh, you know, people that we know um, that, you know, can really just put in, put in some legwork. Cause you're right. You, you can't really, you can't really do it all by yourself, but unfortunately as, as an entrepreneur in, in the beginning stages, there are, there are a lot of things that you do have to do, um, um, you know, by yourself. Um, and, and honestly, I mean, it, the, the pandemic is terrible, but 
it actually allowed me to be more flexible and, you know, in doing the business and having that time at home to kind of do multiple things at one time. But yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, that's, that, that that's a struggle. Um, you know, uh, you know, hiring people and getting people to help, um, like you said, but yeah, in the beginning you go, you kind of do go to people that you kind of already know some, some friends and some family, um, uh, you know, that, you know, <clears throat> to have to but respond. That, that's and, where you got to start. That That's where it's necessary to start. People who believe in you, people who, you know, because, and this is for anybody who's watching this, you know, most people are not going to see your vision. They're just not. Uh, yeah. Most people, like God gave you the vision. He didn't give them the vision. Yeah. But even if people don't buy into your product, if you are a beast, they'll buy into you. If you're somebody who keeps your word, if you're somebody who, if you say, I am going to do this, History has shown whatever you have ever said that you're going to do, you do. People will buy into you, and that's all you need. Those are the people who you start with. Those are the people who get you out the gate. And then when you can afford to start paying them, then when you can afford to bring on more qualified people, you expand. But in the beginning, what I found, people, it's not about money for them. It's about them supporting you and supporting your dream. So, um, Soji, Jelani, thank you for jumping on. I appreciate you, brother. But I want to let more people into the room. So I appreciate All your right. time. All right, for sure. We'll catch up. Just tell everybody where they can find you one more time. The Instagram. I is, think he clicked uh, off, but um, everybody can find you. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on, but I think every everybody can find him at Soul G S O L Speed of Light Gear S O L G. Um, if you're trying to jump into this conversation, please hit that little plus button below. Uh, I saw a couple of people. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Okay, I saw a couple of people trying to jump in. Not sure if they're still waiting around. If you're trying to jump in, hit that um that plus button. Kwasi, if you are in the building, hit the hit the request and jump in. Where are we at? My man Kwasi said he was in the room and I'm not sure where he's at. So Kwasi, if you're around, jump in. I see my man Reg Hunt just jumped in. Reg, what up? What up? What up? Okay, up until then, um, Derek Ferguson, I know you were in the room. If you can, jump in, um, hit that live or hit that request. And, and Curry, I'm, I'm here, but I don't see your request, brother. Where you at? Okay, Curry, I just sent that request back to you. Okay, I don't know if Instagram is bugging tonight, but I'm trying to hit this request. I got a couple of people waiting to get in. Okay, hopefully this works, guys. I apologize. I don't know if it's me, but I just have bad luck with this Instagram. Okay, we're in a good place. What's good, man? Wasi, what up? What's good, Sean? How you, brother? I'm great, man. Yeah, I haven't really done Instagram Live before, so this is cool. <laughs> now, nah, well, 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 I'm glad that you, um, you know, took time out. I know you just jumped off another call, so I appreciate you taking the time out and jumping on. Everybody, just to, to just to, and Kwasi, I'll allow you to introduce yourself, but... I wanted to to bring Kwasi on. Um, our our resident business guru, Derek Ferguson, um, connected a long time colleague, friend, associate um, of ours, Mr. Kwasi here. 
um, earlier today, and he was like, yo, Prez, before you jump on this this uh, clubhouse thing, you need to talk to Kwasi. So, Kwasi, I want you to just give everybody a little bit about your background and, and what makes you the, the social media guru that you are. And then I want to go a little bit into this clubhouse because I, I've been – and, you know, I embarrassed myself. I was supposed to be on Clubhouse tonight. I'm not there. And, and I took kind of your advice, and, and I'm going to set it up right for next week. So give everybody a little bit of background on, on you, and then let's, let's have a Clubhouse talk for a second. Yeah, so real, real, real fast, my family's from Ghana. Uh, I grew up outside Philly, went to the University of Pennsylvania, and um, ended up on Wall Street doing stocks and bonds, trading, investment banking. Um, it wasn't for me, at least not in the way that, that the bank operated that I worked at. Um, is there is there background noise or am I coming in all right? You're fine. Okay. And so I ended up leaving Wall Street and uh, I read this book called The Operator, which was David Geffen's biography. And it showed me the way that one man could grow a, a media empire from literally nothing, you know? And I was really inspired by that story. You know, David Geffen did Geffen Records, Geffen Playhouse, Geffen Hospital, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and he, did, he dropped out of UCLA. He didn't even graduate college. And here I was with an Ivy League degree. And I was like, all right, well, I should be able to make it happen. So I actually um, ended up in LA, in Hollywood. And started at the bottom, as they say, you know, my first job in the music industry, I was handing out flyers on the street corner. I was writing for free, writing blogs. But what that enabled me to do was to get backstage, meet people like Will I Am and the Black Eyed Peas, Kanye West. Very early on in his career, I did some work for him. John Legend, I did some work for him. Both uh, Derek Ferguson, myself and John, all are from the University of Pennsylvania. And so... Um, at one point, I was introduced to John and then Derek almost within a, f a few weeks of each other. Ended up doing some work for John Legend. And then um, Snoop Dogg, we did some publicity work for him. Uh, eventually, I landed at Sony Music and I was there basically at the dawn of the digital age. Uh, when I got to Sony Music, uh, we didn't have MySpace pages. So I became the first, essentially the first social media director or manager at what was called Sony Urban back then. And that was basically Columbia Records and Epic Records. We had artists like the Fugees, uh, Beyonce, 36 Mafia, um, uh, Nas, right? That was all of our roster. And I literally built MySpace pages for all of them, right? Um, I then fast forward to Cornerstone Agency. Some of you might know the Fader Magazine. Um, they do the Fader Ford at South By. But I became a uh, digital marketing manager at Cornerstone. And I got real lucky. It was the summer of 2006. I became the new media mark. I essentially became the marketing strategist, digital marketing strategist for Ice Cube's Laugh Now, Cry Later, for Prince's 3121, for LL Cool J's Mr. Smith, uh, Snoop Dogg's Blue Carpet Treatment, Pharrell's In My Mind, and all Barkley said elsewhere. And of course, P. Diddy's Press Play. Um, very shortly after getting hired as a consultant to work on the press play record by pub, you know, I was then asked to interview to become the first digital media director at bad boy in house. And so I had to go through the process, meet with Julie Greenwald, met with Nikki slight and eventually interviewed with puff directly. I'll never forget this. You know, I interviewed with puff directly at his penthouse in uh, central park, uh, central park, I guess South, right? And uh, was able to, you know, convince him that I was the guy to help Bad Boy evolve into a digital empire as well. And so that's where I met Prez and I met Derek. And, you know, I met, actually had met Derek a few years previous to that, but I eventually took over the role of guiding Bad Boy into the digital age. And so all the MySpace pages, all the YouTube, we had the first YouTube channel that was branded. Um, we were the first ones to do like a Google gadget. We were certainly the first ones to build a television show from a viral campaign, which was called I Want to Work for Diddy. Um, and so I've always kind of been on that cutting edge, trying to figure out 
what is that next platform? After I left Bad Boy in 2010, I started building my own platforms. And to this day, that's what I do all day long. I work on building platforms from the ground up, but also thinking about progressive strategies for platforms that maybe are, out, are emerging like Clubhouse. Okay, so I asked you this offline earlier today. Uh, is it, you know, Instagram right now is flooded. Uh, all of these social platforms are flooded. Is it too, is it still early or is it too late to make an imprint on Clubhouse? Um, that's one question. And then secondly, one of the reasons I wanted to do what we're doing now, we're going to keep it on Instagram Live, but we're going to do it uh, kind of at the same time um, over on Clubhouse is everybody is telling me conversations like these that is what the platform was built for. Uh, these are the conversations that people actually come to the platform for. So I guess you can answer both of those questions and just let us know because, you know, there's somebody on here who has a company um, and is interested in, in expanding their audience. Is Clubhouse at this point like uh, a drop of water in the Pacific Ocean? or is there still room to, to, to flourish? And then secondly, these types of conversations, is this what Clubhouse is all about? Yeah, good questions. So to answer your first question, you know, when I joined Clubhouse, there was 4,000 users approximately, and that was in July. And that was before the app was even out of test flight. And so, a lot has happened now that the app has more than 10 million users, for sure. And it's a very different experience. And it's much more user-friendly to some extent, but also also very confusing. And I would, I would suggest anyone on here who wants to go on Clubhouse, have a friend show you how to use the app properly. Because just like Instagram Live, even I had trouble just logging in right here because I've never been interviewed on Instagram Live this way. So there's a learning curve to all these things, even Twitter. When Twitter first came out, learning about hashtags and at symbols, it took some time for people to understand that. It's not intuitive, right? So Clubhouse is the same thing. Have someone help you just learn the basic functionality if you're going to go there because it's important. Um, to answer your question, is it flooded? I mean, anytime you have 10 million people doing anything, there's going to be some noise. But to put it in context, there are 2 billion people on Facebook. Right. So I look at it very comparably. Like if you go on Facebook, is there a lot of noise? A hundred percent. If you go on Clubhouse, can there be a lot of noise? For sure. But you can also tailor your experience on this on the app so that it's more aligned with what your preferences are. And if you don't want to be bothered every 20 minutes, then you have to manage your preferences accordingly. You don't have to get notified every time somebody jumps in a conversation. You can make your notifications infrequent, for example, in your own personal settings in Clubhouse so that you don't get bombarded as much. Or you can, complete your you can completely turn off your notifications, which many people do. But, you know, it just depends kind of what your goal is. As far as it being flooded, I don't think so at all. It's still a brand new platform. They haven't even monetized at all. Uh, no one's made any money, right, from Clubhouse. E even the people at Clubhouse, you know, there's no, they're, they're not making revenue, right? They're, they're still just bleeding money building their platform. So their house is still being built, right? So I would recommend all of y'all to jump in Clubhouse as soon as you can so that you can start to learn how it works. Just like being an Instagram influencer, or being a Twitter influencer, the earlier you are there and building your presence, the higher likelihood it is that you're going to actually reach whatever your goal might be. Um, and I don't think it's too late. It's just starting, really. Uh, it's really just starting. How many, how many, what is it called? Followers, friends, like subscribers? What's it called over there on Clubhouse? Yeah, so you, you would, it's followers. Um, for for clubs, you can you have followers and you have members of clubs as well, kind of like you know. What's the difference? Else. The only difference that I'm aware of is that um, so as an individual, you can have followers, right? 
as a cl- as a club host or club quote unquote owner, you can your club can have members or followers. The only real difference is if you are uh, wanting to host an, an event that only your club would be able to attend, then the people that are following your club and even the rest of Clubhouse wouldn't see it. Uh, so- okay, how many how many followers right, do you have? Are, are you good now? Yeah, no, I just my phone. I don't know how to keep whatever. It just went. It died <laughs> or just you know it go. It closes. Whatever. So I mean, I personally have. Um, about five fifty six hundred followers. I started in Clubhouse. A, in Clubhouse, um, I started a club called the United Nations at seventy five Past, Present, and Future Club, which is a club all about geopolitics and um, geopolitics and uh, uh, economic development globally. And we have about twenty four thousand uh, followers. I'm sorry, we have about. Uh, maybe 5,000 members and about 20,000 followers is about, about where we're at right now. Beautiful. Um, on average, when you do, uh, and I don't even know what they call, when you open your room up and have these panel discussions, right. how many people are you seeing? How many of the 25,000 are coming? Yeah, so it really depends on the time of the day, who's speaking, um, uh, you know, what's in the news, Right. You know, for example, during the Georgia runoff elections, you know, we would have rooms that were, I don't know, anywhere from 200 to 500 people over the course of six, four or five hours, because it it was something that was very relevant to what everyone was thinking about um, was the Georgia runoff with John, uh, 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 John Ossoff and Ralph Warnock earlier this year. When we had Sir Martin Sorrell, the founder of WPP Agency, you know, over the course of two hours, we probably had 700 people there. And at any one point, north of 500 people at any given time. Um, sometimes we only have a couple hundred people. And, and, you know, the thing is, people come in, they'll come in for five minutes, 10 minutes. Maybe 50% of the people will stay the whole time. But many people will come in, you know, kind of experience it for a little bit and then maybe go do something else. So um, I would say anywhere between 200 and, you know, I've had rooms when I hosted uh, outside of my club. I hosted a room. I just say my second club is called the Amazing Club, and we hosted uh, Jay Dilla's mother on Jay Dilla Day uh, in, in celebration of Jay Dilla Fest. That room we had a, over a thousand people because we had D Nice and Just Blaze came in, and so uh, it really depends. It really depends. It could be a couple people, and then also it, it could depend on the duration of the room as well, right? So let, let me ask you, and I'm sorry to cut in because we got we got some of the audience members asking questions here. Okay. So I want to make sure that, that, that we're getting in as many questions as humanly possible to educate. Uh, somebody asked, what's the best time of day for a discussion? So that's a great question. Um, it really, de- I think it depends because, I mean, I'll tell you what, there are certain conversations that don't even start till one or two o'clock Eastern. Right. The thing to consider, it's a global network. So even if it's 4 a.m. in New York, it's 10 a.m. in London. Right. It's, the you know, uh, whatever, uh, 15 or 18 hours ahead in Australia. Right. It's a different time in China. So whatever time you're you're going live or whatever, you're, you might catch a wave of people from a different a different time zone that speak a different language that you weren't even trying to catch just because of the time of the day. So it really depends on what your goal is. If you want to have a conversation focused on U.S. interests and capture a U.S. audience, then, of course, you know, between, like, 12 and, like, 10, you know, on the very late end. When you said 12 and 10, are we talking a.m. or or, or Uh, p.m.? I'm sorry, 12 noon to, you know, 10 p.m. But... You know, right, right now, I see one of our audience members, um, Rod Dollars. He says that between 7 and 8 p.m. He works great. Uh, you know, and I'm assuming that's Eastern Standard Time. Sure. Again, it depends what your goal is. If you're talking about, like, doing a music listening party, then sure. After work, when people are winding down, listening party. It's, it's kind of like the same way the, 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 the world works outside. But if you want to have a conversation about the music business or about, 
you know, uh, royalty payments, more of a conference style, then you want to do it earlier in the day because that's when people are in a work mindset, you know? Um, it really depends, though. I mean, you, you could, you could, it, it definitely varies, I would say. Okay, um, movers, before, before, while we have Kwasi here, any questions you have, let's start typing them in. I will hit Kwasi with as many questions as, as humanly possible to help us. <laughs> Kwasi, I got another question for you. What, what does Sean Prez need to be doing from today until next Wednesday night to, number one, let people know I'm even on the platform, I'm signed up? Because one of the things you told me earlier today was, look, Sean, there's a lot of freaking rooms out there. How's anybody even going to know? Like, if you did this thing tonight, which I thought I was going to do, you're like, nobody would even know how to get to your room. <laughs> so <laughs> how, how do I even promote that? What does that look like? How would people even even uh, letting people know, come to my room, because th now there's 10 million people on right, this right. platform? So the key, the key at this point uh... – First of all, like I said before, getting a tutorial of the app is the first thing I would do because just understanding the basic functionality is going to empower you throughout your entire clubhouse experience. Um, so that's step one. Step two is you can, if you, you put something on the calendar, you can then share that calendar listing just like you would share like a Zoom link with anyone in the world. You can send that out. And when the, the room goes live, you can also send out that link if, for anyone who wants to get into the room once it's live. So I would suggest do the tutorial, put the event on the calendar, send that link to everyone who you want to be there, maybe through email. Okay, no, hold on. Because I've, never, because I've never experienced this. When you say put it on the calendar, what calendar? I'm sorry. So there's a calendar inside Clubhouse. Okay. That allows you to list the event for anyone in Clubhouse um, to see. But the challenge is there. There's so many events happening on Clubhouse. Nobody, no one will actually see it from the calendar. People will see it if they're following you. They'll get a notification once you put it on the calendar. And secondarily, if you send it to them directly via an email or text message or whatever, the other thing a lot of people do is they make flyers. They'll make a flyer for the event that's coming up, post that on Instagram, post that on, on Twitter, post that on Facebook. And then that's another you know, way for people to hit you up to say, oh, send me the link for that event. Or if they're following you on Clubhouse, they'll get the notification when the event goes live. So the, the, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get as many questions. Yeah, no problem. Possible. Was, was there more to that? Because I didn't want to cut you off. No, I, I was just going to say that it's, it's, if people follow you, that's the most important thing. Because when people follow you, they will get notified whenever you open a room. So that's what you want to push people to. You want to push people to follow you so that when you start a room, no matter what, they'll get a notification and they can join the conversation. Okay, here are two more questions. Um, number one, how consistent do you need to be on? And the second question is, are there any topics that are, more, are, are most popular that you found? So how often do you need to be doing these panels? Is, is this something you need to be doing seven days a week? Can you do it once a week if you're trying to grow your following? And are there any topics that you have personally found that resonates with that audience? So a big part of Clubhouse is not just hosting, but is also being in the audience, right? Because it's a community. And so it's not just about you always being on stage. It's also about you becoming a part of other people's communities, right? It's also about you um, asking questions to, uh, on other people's situations, right? Because then not only do you build a relationship potentially with whoever that host is, but then you're also getting your, building a relationship with the entire room of people there. And so it, it's it, it's there's really no set amount of time that you can spend doing that right it's how how big of a community do you want to have how effective are you at making friends building relationships with other people that you might want to connect with or that people that can help you accomplish your agenda so it, it's like saying how much do you want to go to school 
Like you can go to school till sixth grade. You can go to school till 12th grade. You can go to school, get a bachelor's degree. You can get a master's degree. You can get a PhD. You can get two PhDs. It's like, how much do you want to eat? And how good are you at eating? You know what I mean? Understood. Are there any, are there any topics that you found that um, resonate more than others? That's a good question. And somebody also said um, you can also ping people into your room. 100%. So... Um, uh, it's a good, two good points. So one, 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 as far as the topics, I mean, whatever is being talked about in pop culture or subculture, I would say are great places to start. Um, you know, uh, for example, today the, the stimulus bill got passed, right? So I'm sure there's people talking about that right now. Uh, you know, Kanye and Kim got divorced. So there was a bunch of rooms about that. But also NFTs. Maybe you y'all might have heard about these these new digital assets called non fungible tokens. There's rooms every day, two or three, about NFTs. You know, um, there's rooms about pretty much anything that's happening in po- in society. There's rooms about. So so current. Would you say current events it, it makes good panel discussions? Current events, but also current culture. Right. Gotcha. What, what's happening in culture? Like who, what are they? Do- like what's his uh. Tory Lanez just sold $500,000 in NFTs, right? That's a great topic to discuss in Clubhouse because you're bringing together both culture and technology that's on the cutting edge. Like, that would be a really cool conversation, and people would show up for that, right? As far as pinging people into the rooms, yes, when, when the room goes live, you can then – you have the opportunity to invite anyone that follows you to join that conversation as well in real time. Um, and that's also another way to get people there for sure. Um, I find that, you know, sending the link directly to people by a text message is probably the most effective way because there is a lot of noise. And so you want to balance out. I mean, the thing is people in the app that are getting pings, they get a lot of pings. And so you kind of need to balance, like, even if you ping that person, they may or may not respond. So you probably want to maybe even send them a text message, a text message if you really want them there. You know what I mean? Okay. So let, let me, let me try to get through as much of this as possible. Okay. Um, you, uh, let me see. Somebody says you have to be consistent and you have to have good mods. I don't know if that's mods good or moderators. Okay. There you go. They're speaking, they're speaking a different language here. Good right. mods that will promote your room um, and promote your page. Who else do we have that's asking any questions here? Uh, people are really, what is that? People are really spending the dollars short some some moments. That's NFTs. That's about NFTs. Is that what that is? Right. Okay, yeah. anybody has any additional comments or, or questions, please ask them now while we have Kwasi here. So Kwasi, for me, uh, just taking into consideration what you said um, today, I should be on Instagram with a flyer letting people know next week, next Wednesday is going to be our first um, uh, clubhouse experience. Right. Number two, I should I should not just be on Clubhouse on Wednesday, a week from today, but beginning tomorrow, beginning tonight, I should go and sit in other people's rooms, yep. learn the platform, uh, speak, ask questions, stuff like that, because that's how I'm going to get people to um, actually follow me and know that I am active on the platform. Did I get exactly. that clear? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. And, and somebody like you, Prez, I mean, there's so many rooms about music, culture every day. A lot of the artists that you've even worked with are on there. They're hosting rooms. You got people like 21 Savage and Meek Mills and, you know, half of the music industry is already in there. So I think you'll find uh, a warm welcome. <laughs> there's even, I mean, there's been rooms about just bad boy employee, uh, alumni, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and so you're 100% right. Get engaged, get involved, not just about you hosting all the time, but really be a part of the community. Find, find new friends, find new allies, and then you can build your communities together.
Okay, I got I got um, rhythm brewing here, uh, and this is this is a female who who started a a beer company. Uh, you know, I love what she's doing. I think they're based out of Connecticut. So uh, she says, "I'm a woman in the beverage industry, and it's been amazing to generate unique conversation, and it's also it's also an awesome networking um, tool." You know, it's it's interesting because I would have never thought. That that someone in the beverage industry, more important, more specific, uh, beer, you know, Rhythm Brewing is using that platform to generate uh, publicity and conversation centered around what they're doing. So I love that. That that that's dope. You know, Rhythm Brewing. What what are y'all actually talking about? That that's that would be you know for me fascinating to know like what what. Would you guys, what, what's the discussion look like? What type of beer do people want to drink? Uh, there's my buddy, Jetty, by the way, from Clubhouse. Okay, um, I see Curry, Curry Kid. Curry, I'm not, I'm not sure what you're trying to say here. You, you say he's been doing a great job in hip-hop behind the scenes. Um, thank you for his input. I don't know if you mean Kwasi's been doing a great job behind thank, the scenes. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's dope. And that's what my man Curry. Um, shout out to Brooklyn Curry Kid. Long time vet in the game. Anybody have any additional questions for uh, Kwasi before he steps out of the room? Anybody? I think all of the questions have been asked. If you've asked all your questions... Okay. Okay, I see something just came in. Um, that will be the big platform. Is, uh, uh, okay, I don't think it, it was a question. Okay, Rhythm Bruin says, yes, uh, advancing people of color in the beer business. So I guess that, that's what the conversation looks like. Everybody, make sure y'all go shout, um, go follow Rhythm Brewing Company as well. And and next week I would love to have you guys on this IG live. I think that um, you know, women in 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 the beer industry. I mean, that's that's a very unique conversation, and, and I would love to have it. So make sure next week we we speak offline, and y'all can hit me offline. You got my number, Kwasi. I appreciate you, brother. No, no doubt, Prez. Anytime, brother. Okay, listen, Kwasi. I do want to talk about you. Um, let's finish our conversation offline. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Have a great night, guys. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we are coming up on the hour. Do we have anybody whatsoever um, that has anything that they want to contribute to the com tonight's conversation? Any any general questions about business that you guys need answered? Um, this has been a great discussion tonight, actually. If you have not checked in, um, if you have not checked it out, the, the Jay Morrison interview, I think you guys need to check it out. Jay Morrison, um, you know, the, he, he provided an incredible interview. Uh, no matter how you feel about him, there's a lot circulating around his name. He was asked very, very tough questions, and he answered the questions. Then it becomes up to you guys. So I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with Jay Morrison. He is the founder of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a lot of controversy around his name, and he gave us an exclusive in-depth interview. Um, so shout to Jay Morrison. And at the end of the day, I've been getting a lot of support uh, for the way I conducted the interview. And on the other side, I have a bunch of people who, have just written him off and um, are upset that I even did the interview. It's like, he, he, no matter what you think about the man, hear his side, then make your, make your judgment. So the point was, ask him the real questions, address all of the rumors. And I think that if for nothing else, he answered the questions. After that, you guys be the judge. Uh, I guess we'll leave it there. And I'll catch you guys next Monday, Motivation Monday. Y'all know 7 p.m. We're here. Um, Rhythm Brewing 
let's 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 hit me offline. I wanted y'all back here um next Wednesday. We need to get you into this conversation for real, for real. Uh I love what y'all are doing. 7 p.m. Monday, motivation Monday, 7 p.m. Wednesday, uh Warrior Wednesday. And we'll end it here. Peace and love, guys. And I'll catch everybody next week. One love.